against my dreams Only God can help me Is week eight of the college football season, and it's time for our Friday afternoon chat with our friend Tim Tebow. What's up, What's Tim? What's up, guys? That that promo kind of got me hype. I got goosebumps no right doubt. now. Ooh, oh, I, that was awesome. Good we stuff were saying the by same your producer. Thing in here. <laughs> uh, Tim, you're in Starkville this week, where the second-ranked LSU Tigers will take on Mississippi State. How do these Tigers compare to the number one team in college football in Alabama? Well, I'll tell you what, they can give Alabama a threat, and the number one reason is Joe Burrow. You know, when you look at history, the last 10 or so years, Alabama, whenever they have struggled, it's been against a quarter that quarterback that has played great against them, whether that was Cam Newton, Chad Kelly, Bo Wallace, Trevor Lawrence last year. The times that Alabama have been upset, it's been done because a quarterback has stepped up and had a fantastic game. And so far, Joe Burrow has been unbelievable this year, and I am so excited to see LSU and Joe Burrow take on this Alabama team, because that's going to be two big-time quarterbacks going head-to-head. -head. Top four teams in the nation that you'd put in the playoffs right now, in order. Who are they? Today, I'll go Alabama number one, LSU two, Ohio State three, Oklahoma four, and then I'll have Clemson just out at number five. Why would you have the reigning defending <coughs> national champions out of the playoff mix if it started today? Is it because you've been talking to Paul Feinbaum? Well, we, we can't start with their reigning defending national champions. We're supposed to cut it off at the end of last year and start this year fresh. And when you look at this year, you look at the way they played against Syracuse. You look at the way they played against North Carolina. You, you look at they're, they're a really good team, have a chance to be a great team. I'm not tr trying to knock Clemson, but I'm trying to say is if you match them up with what Oklahoma's done, with what Ohio State has done, with what Al Alabama and LSU have done, I think they're just out. I still think they're going to get to the playoff because their strength of schedule, and I think they have a chance to do damage because they're going to get better. But right now, they have not been their best. And we're supposed to look at the four best teams. So far this year, I do not see them as the four best teams. Tim, but I do think they will get there. He has been talking to Paul Feinbaum. Yeah, yeah, Tim, I, because we, we argued about this with Paul, and Stephen A and I agree about this point. I'd like you just to explain this a little more. Here's my issue. Let's say there are only three undefeated teams, and Clemson is one of them. I understand you don't want to incentivize powerhouse schools to make easy schedules if they win the national title, go undefeated, and then get right back. But in college football, it's not just if you win, it's how you win, how you look. But doesn't that undermine competitiveness in another way? Like, the most important thing is to win. And if you won the national title and don't lose and other teams have lost, how can you deny them the chance to, to defend? Just make them one of the top four. Well, because we got to cut off last year at last year. This year's Clemson team is not last year's Clemson team. Ask all the first-round draft picks that are now playing in the NFL. So we can't just say what you did last year counts this year. It's not, it doesn't work that way. It's a new team, a brand-new team, especially a brand-new defense, and they're not executing and clicking the same on offense. So I, I don't think it's fair or right to look at last year and give them credit this year for what they did last year, a very different team. And then I also think you have to play the eye test of who you believe is best because they don't all play each other in college football. You can't say, okay, you know, um, you, you have to be able to say this, you look at with your eyes and say which team's going to match up because we won't know based on Clemson's schedule versus Oklahoma's schedule. So you have to be able to do the eye test. It's always been that way, and I don't know how you can fix it unless you add more teams to the playoff. Tim, are we at a point in time right now when you consider the fact that the top six or seven teams in the country are all undefeated. You got to look at Wisconsin. We ain't talking about them enough. You mentioned yeah. Oklahoma. There's Clemson. There's obviously Penn State as well. Are we at a point right now where it's time to say, damn it, whoever loses a game, you're out. It ain't no one-loss team that's going to be in the playoff. Yeah, no. Are we at that point? 
No, I don't think so because not all schedules are created equal. You look at the gauntlet that certain teams have to go through, they're going to get to play three or four top ten teams. Other teams, in, in, like Clemson, you're not, you might not get another ranked team on your schedule. So if Clemson loses, it's going to be really hard to show the country and to show us that they're worthy of it. But in Alabama or in LSU, there's a gauntlet in front of them, and that changes everything. So I do think it helps to have a hard schedule because if you get knocked down, you still have a chance to battle your way back. So, Tim, then let's talk about Georgia then. What does their loss to South Carolina mean for them and their playoff chances? Yeah, it's not a good loss. The, the problem with that loss, it was at home. It was against a, a South Carolina team that, that hasn't been executing, and they found a way to win, and you turn the ball over four times. Jake Fromm was not at his best. The defense wasn't at their best. And South Carolina even gave, gave them chances by missing field goals to win it, and they still couldn't win it. So I do think that is a really tough loss. But for Georgia, they do play uh, Florida and Jacksonville and possibly an SEC championship game against probably the number one team in the country at that time. So they still have some big games. So there's still a chance, an outside chance, Georgia could get back into this thing. Can you tell me a little bit about Jake Fromm? A couple of years ago, he was he, this kid was going to be the truth and all that. What, what's gone on there, Tim? That was my question. I, st I still yeah. think he's a really good quarterback. I think he had a tough day. I don't think he was on the same page with his receivers. And I also think having a new offensive coordinator this year has really changed things a little bit. I don't think they're dynamic offensive in their play calling. I don't think they're changing it up a lot. I think other uh, teams are keying on DeAndre Swift and be them being able to, to press and play intense on their receivers. And so I think Georgia has to be more aggressive. They have to back the defense up. South Carolina's corners and linebackers were sitting and squatting on everything last week. You have to threaten the defense down the field. They're just not doing that enough. Notre Dame did the same thing, by the way. Boy, you lucky I'm running out of time with this segment. He had a tough day. Like you want him to go and sit with Dr. Phil. I mean, come on, Tim. But let me ask you before I let you get on out of here. You have a vote right now. Who's yeah. your Heisman Trophy winner? Jalen Hurts? Joe Burrow. Tua? Joe, Joe Burrow. Joe Burrow. Joe Burrow. He is high uh, on right, Joe Burrow. Right, no. right now, Joe Burrow, I don't think he's going to win it uh, the second week of December, but right now he's got the two biggest wins of any quarterback. He went to Austin, and he beat Texas, and he didn't play just okay. He played great. And then yep. again last Saturday night against Florida, a defense that everyone was hyping up, and he carved them up for four quarters. He's had the two biggest games in college football, and he's been consistent all year. Joe Burrow, if I had to vote today, Joe wins it, but I do think there's a lot to happen. So December the second week of December, there's going to be a lot of things that will change. I'm calling my man, Dr. Phil. He <laughs> he had a rough day. <laughs> You're talking to one of the greatest college saying, players who ever saying, lived, I'm just Stephen saying, he had a rough day. He had you know what he's talking about. 12, 13 Saturdays. That's it. That's it. There is no such thing as a rough day. Handle your business. He I mean, had a rough, rough day. It's day. true. It was a rough right, day. He right. had a rough day. Tim didn't get to have a rough day. You had to show up. He had That's to show true. up. I, I could never have a rough day with you, Stephen A. I tell you this much. I I, I knew I didn't like the name Fromm anyway. There's something about Fromm as a quarterback <laughs> that Careful. just doesn't turn the me on. Man. The it doesn't turn me on. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, right, the quarterback, quarterback from. No, no, no. no. All right. Doesn't work for me, Tim. What's in name? Thank, thank you so much. Name so matter the quarterback By position. By the way, Stephen A., I hope it was an awesome week celebrating your birthday, man. It was, baby. Hey. It was, baby. Hey. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Hey. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Oh, thank you. Getting latest. old and loving it, Tim. Getting old and loving it. <laughs> That's right. the alternative. Thank Just getting you, wiser Tim. every day, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. <laughs> All right, be sure to watch Tim and the rest of the SEC Nation crew live from Starkville tomorrow morning Jake at 10 a.m. Eastern on the SEC <laughs> Network. All right. So, Not exactly Joe Montana. Still to come. Yeah, exactly. still to come. Is Does the it sing, Max? Does it sing? Now, yeah, I was bringing up LaFleur. Is the Aaron Rodgers-Matt LaFleur partnership headed for a division title this season? Uh, the fellows will tell you whether to book it or forget it. Smart about <laughs> Smart on the part of our producers. They took First my face. First will be in Los Angeles all next week. Who will be the beast in the East after Sunday night? And don't miss the battle of Stephen A's Lakers and Max's Clippers. That's all next week here on First Take.